During a chemistry lecture on methane and its structure, a student asked the teacher, is methane really tetrahedral? The teacher thought of providing a good explanation for the question. He logged into YouTube and found that the Umbrella Academy has a good lecture on the topic. He played the same and the students were happy. Let us see how Umbrella Academy answered this question. We all know that the ground state electronic configuration of carbon atom is 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. We know, for any atom, these inner shell electrons are not available for bonding. Only these valence electrons are available for bonding. Let us draw the valence shell configuration for carbon. 2s orbital is lower in energy and is filled first to accommodate two electrons. The 3p orbitals are having same energy and as per Hund's rule, will be singly filled. We have only two electrons so third p orbital remains empty. Thus carbon has only two unpaired electrons. So how many bonds should it form? Yes, you are right, only two bonds. That means carbon should be bivalent. But if carbon were to form only two covalent bonds, it wouldn't complete its octet. But in reality, carbon shows tetravalency and form four bonds. Pauling suggested that in the process of bond formation, one of the electron from 2s orbital of carbon gets excited to empty 2p orbital. This makes four unpaired electrons available in the valence shell for bond formation. Thus carbon atom now has four unpaired electrons in its outermost shell and can attain a stable configuration by forming four covalent bonds with four hydrogen atoms. If the same is depicted via orbital overlap diagram, the three bonds would involve individual overlapping of three 2p orbitals, which lie perpendicular to each other, with one s electron of three hydrogen atoms, and one of these would involve overlapping of two s orbital of carbon with one s orbital of hydrogen. Consequently, the four bonds so formed would be of different nature. This bond angle is expected to be 90 degrees, as are the other two. This one is expected to be around 135 degrees. Logically, the bond length of these three CH bonds should be longer than this one which is expected to be shorter. Moreover, based on the electronegativity difference, each CH bond must have a small dipole moment so that the vector sums of the CH dipoles would not cancel out in this structure. This means CH4 should have a net dipole moment. However, experimentally, the four bonds are found to be equivalent. All HCH bond angles found to be 109.5 degrees and CH bond length 109 pm. And the net dipole moment is found to be zero, contrary to what is expected, hinting that this can't be the structure of methane. Another possibility is, methane can have square planar structure. If so, all CH bonds will be of equal length and net dipole moment will be zero, as observed experimentally. But this structure has all HCH bond angles of 90 degrees, which is contrary to 109.5 degrees observed experimentally. These observations rule out the square planar structure for methane. This equivalence of bonds in methane was explained with the help of hybridization of orbitals, a concept first proposed by Linus Pauling in 1931. Pauling suggested that before bond formation, whenever appropriate, two or more than two different orbitals of comparable energies mix or hybridize to give same number of equivalent orbitals having same energies and shapes, called as hybrid orbitals. 
Thus, in case of methane, before bond formation, 1s and 3p orbitals of the second shell of carbon are combined to form four hybrid orbitals, denoted as sp3 orbitals. Such mixing of 1s and 3p orbitals is referred as sp3 hybridization. The four sp3 hybrid orbitals are degenerate, that is have same energy, and each orbital has one part s, 25% s character, and three parts p, 75% p character. Now the question here remains. Is the excitation of electron from 2s to 2p energetically feasible? The promotion of electron from lower energy 2s orbital to higher energy 2p orbital requires 96 kilocalories per mole of energy. The bond dissociation energy of a single CH bond is 105 kilocalories per mole. If the excitation didn't occur, carbon would remain bivalent and could form only two covalent bonds, which would release only 210 kilocalories per mole. After excitation, formation of four CH bonds releases 420 kilocalories per mole of energy. The gain in tetravalency is 210 kilocalories per mole. Cost of excitation is 96 kilocalories per mole. The overall advantage of exciting an electron is 114 kilocalories per mole, making it a feasible process to happen. If we draw the valence orbitals of carbon, for example, this is 2s orbital, and these are the 3p orbitals. This on p axis is called 2px, and this on y axis is called 2py, and this on z axis is called 2pz. These 1s and 3p orbitals hybridize or blend to form equal number of hybrid orbitals called as sp3 hybrid orbitals. The sp3 hybrid orbital has two lobes like p orbital, except that, these are of different size. The mixing of S with P orbitals can be depicted like this. The small lobe of hybrid orbital is formed when S orbital subtracts from the lobe of P orbital, making it smaller than the other, which is formed by addition of S orbital to the lobe of P orbital. The larger lobe of hybrid orbital is used for overlap during bond formation. Since like charges repel, therefore the four hybrid orbitals, each filled with an electron must arrange themselves in space so as to minimize this repulsion. These four hybrid orbitals can get as far away from each other as possible when they point towards the corners of a regular tetrahedron, a pyramid with four faces, each an equilateral triangle. In case of methane, each of the four sp3 hybrid orbitals overlap with the s orbital of hydrogen to form four identical CH sigma bonds. We call these sigma bonds because they are formed by head on overlap of orbitals. All single bonds found in organic compounds are sigma bonds. Other examples similar to methane include CHCl3. CCL4, etc. In case of tetrahedral methane, all HCH bond angles are equal to 109.5 degrees. All CH bond lengths are equal to 109 pm, and dipole moment is zero. This is same as found experimentally. This proves that methane is tetrahedral. Any carbon, as the one in methane, which forms four covalent bonds using sp3 orbitals is called a tetrahedral carbon.